Today we're gonna to put this engine in this car. Okay, so we last left off with this build. Uh, we had the timing stuff done, we put the head on the car, we started the bolt stuff onto the engine, and now we're gonna finish that up and drop this into the car today. So we're gonna get th this thing rolling. We gotta start with our intake manifold, uh, exhaust manifold slash turbo, and then our clutch stuff, which we took off for a different video. So we will make sure we link to all those videos that we've shot previously related to this in the description, and let's proceed with our install. Okay, so we're gonna start by mounting our turbo on the back of our engine, but before we do so, we're gonna replace these studs. So this car is a Northern car, so these studs were in here pretty good. They're not gonna turn out very easily. We have an extractor. We also used uh, penetrating oil, as well as heated them up with a torch to try to make this thing come out a little easier. So we're gonna get this thing going to try to get these studs off. <laughs> It's not moving at all. It's gonna shear off. Is it? Yep. Okay, so this video is not something that we're gonna be shooting as a DIY. Right now we're cleaning up the threads because we just pulled the studs out of this turbo because we're replacing with new ones. This is a process that's not particularly easy. You need a stud extractor to remove the studs and then uh, we're using a tap just to clean the threads up because these things don't thread in there super cleanly. Uh, so we're cleaning up all these threads. We're going to get our studs in place and then we're going to mount our turbo onto our engine. You don't really want to be trying to do this when the, with the turbo in the car, turbo and engine in the car, uh, because this is going to be much tougher to access. So we're doing this ahead of time to get prepped so that once we get this in the car, we can just mount the downpipe right to the turbo and it'll be a piece of cake. Now we're ready to install our turbo, but first this is where our manifold goes under the cylinder head. Uh, we want to clean up this mating surface. We're using this uh, air tool and you would maybe try to use some emery cloth and maybe a wire brush or something like that. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time, so we're going to use air tools. All right, so we've cleaned up our mating surface real good. We also took a wire brush to the studs and then the area around the studs just to clean it up and make sure you get we got good surface area there. So our gasket's good to go. We can now drop our turbo on top of this. And this thing on the bottom here, this is a plate that you actually don't always need to remove when you're putting the turbos on or off. You may want to loosen it a little bit depending on if you can get the fitment on there, but essentially it just kind of has hooks that hang on to it. And then you get the top portion rotated in place and get the nuts on. So we're going to do that right now. Okay. So now we're going to drop our turbo in place. That bracket is still mounted, which may give us some trouble. So we're gonna try to mount it like this, but if we get too much trouble from that, I may end up taking off that bracket. Yeah, I'm definitely taking off that bracket. <laughs> that bracket's not gonna work. All right, so instead of taking the bracket off, we were able to just rotate it out of the way. We have these plates loose. These are 12 millimeters, and because it's gonna be hard to get this manifold and turbo on otherwise, we also have this coolant line for the turbo, which actually, has banjo bolts and then washers on either side, gaskets um, for crush washers that's already bolted up and mounted because once you get this turbo in, uh, you're not gonna have easy access to this line. So it's better to take this side off the turbo, which is what we did, bolt this side on with our new washers, and now we're just gonna hang this turbo. Now, then we should be able to hang this pretty easily on top here. And once you get it up there, kind of wiggle it around and you'll see it kind of sit down just like that. And then we can, for now, we actually have new bolts, but we don't have them right now. So I'm just gonna throw a nut on here just to keep this thing from sliding around and flipping back on us. Originally mounted this turbo in place, tightened all the manifold nuts. It made it actually impossible. This dropped down too low and we had to, uh, we're not able to mount this bracket. So what, what we did is loosen all those top nuts and uh, that way we can mount the lower bracket in place because otherwise you're not gonna get, be able to get this mounted. So we're gonna get this lower turbo bracket mounted in place before we start messing with the other lines. That way we have enough play to work with that we can get all these bolts threaded in. Okay, so we are, here we have your oil feed line, which we're gonna swing out of the way, and there you have your oil return line. We have our gasket here. Uh, this guy is gonna go in between and then we're gonna bolt this up. So 
This shouldn't be too difficult here. Just get it lined up and then get this threaded in place. Okay, so we have this guy threaded in place. We're gonna wait to tighten that up. And this feed line has a seal on it that it just goes in the block. So we can just get that guy popped in there and seat it in place. Okay, so here we are ready to deal with our manifolds. We're gonna swap all the hardware over from our old manifold to our new one. This isn't really because there's anything wrong with this manifold, but it is an old manifold, which is why we wanna to swap to the new ones because they have a different arm setup because they would tend to leak vacuum from here uh, and they had motor issues. So there's a bunch of reasons why to replace it with the most updated version of the manifold, uh, which we're doing while this is off. So this is a fairly inexpensive part relative to the amount of work it takes if you were to have to replace it later on. So we are going to swap the rail, the throttle body, and then all these hoses and stuff over to our manifold. Okay, so we did mount the throttle body on, but before I did that, I'm, I'm just threading these in. The, I did clean the throttle body with, uh, with some, some throttle body cleaner. This is what you wanna do. Before you mount throttle bodies, take them on or off. It's always good to clean them because they get dirty and can cause faults related to throttle body issues. So just get it cleaned up pretty good, get all the dirt out of there, and then you can reset throttle adaptation once you get the engine back in the car. Okay, so taking this, this check valve assembly out with this hose, uh, what I ended up doing was using a pick to pry on the sides of it to get that out. Now, what they actually pop onto is, is a, rib, a rib side of the manifold, and so there's a hook right underneath here. So you can kind of get on the back side here and pry on it to allow it to pop up and over and then slide back. Okay, so now we are going to take our rail off, and so it just pops up and off from here. And you also may need to get it off from the back here, so there's kind of this plate here. So you gotta pop it up away from there, and then flip it up and over to get it off of these. And then once we get that off of there, we have this line that is hanging on here. So get this swung around, and it did have a screw on there as well, which we that was mounted on the side here. And we should be able to swing that in and get that out. We are gonna install our injectors now that we've finished getting the manifold stuff set up, but we have new tip seals that are installed on here. Now we shot a video with Charles, the home mechanic, which we will link to that shows you more detail about this. But essentially, you there are these nylon bushings at the end. These go into the cylinder and you need to slide them onto the injector, but the you wanna do that with one of these tools because it allows it to guide on there and not stretch too far over to where it can't be crushed back down. So what you do is you slide it on, get, the, get it on there, and then you take these and you collapse the seal down to where it crushes down. So you use one and then two, and so what we do is kind of work it on there, and then we go with the last one and work that on there. And now our injector seals should be ready to go. So we're gonna have to do that with all of them. We did also replace the rear seals here and we cleaned up the injectors as well as the tips a little bit to get any of the carbon on, on the injector off before we install it in the car. Okay, now we're gonna install our injectors into the cylinder and you want your spacer here and we have our injector assembled, seal here, seal here, and then this this other parts that come with with the injector and we're going to get that installed into our cylinder and then we line up this portion of the injector with a notch here and then we have our installation tool which helps you push we're going to go ahead and work it in place all right and we're going to do that with the other three now to complete our install okay now we are going to clip on, you wanna take off this part of your engine harness because it's much easier to get these on before the manifold goes on. And we have that all clipped in place and now we can put our manifold on. So we have in Windex sprayed on these seals here on the back side. Do you wanna lubricate them in some way, even if it's temporary, just to get everything lubed up so when you get this manifold popped on, you can get it in place. So we're gonna get this manifold popped on. You use these guides on these studs on the outer ones here. You wanna make sure everything's clear. And then we're gonna slide this on. Also, it is a good time if you need to, to clean your valves. You actually don't have two dirty valves here. So 
I'm gonna get this in place and you kind of get your seals wiggled on there. Okay, so we have our manifold mounted in place. Now one note I wanna make is this rail, the, the metal part that goes in place here had some uh, issues with getting everything lined up. So we had to do a little bit of priming to get the manifold popped over the studs and in place there. So once we did, we got the, the 10 mils underneath to pull it in along with getting these top ones all threaded and then get them bolted in place. We are now gonna mount the, uh, this bracket with that, which has these two connectors underneath the manifold here. And then you can mount your, your manifold support brace. And then we are approaching going into our vehicle. All right, so we are going to throw on our coolant pipe here and we have this hose that comes off this other cross pipe. Get that popped in place. And these, this actually bolts up underneath the manifold here. So I'm gonna pop this off temporarily. We just threw that on there. We're gonna get this connected. And then we're gonna get this bolted up in place. Now we are looking at our rear main seal. We did install a new rear main and we're gonna install our flywheel. Uh, we are gonna be putting the TTRS pressure plate on there. We actually shot it in a shop video talking about it. So if you're not familiar with it, uh, we will link to it. And now we're gonna throw our flywheel on. Okay, so now we have our uh, disc and pressure plate already mounted in place. We have our clutch alignment tool and we're gonna get this torque down. Now, uh, once we're done with that, we're gonna throw our transmission onto our engine assembly and then we're gonna put it underneath our car and drop our car down on top of it and get the engine bolted up. So last night when we were finishing up this vehicle and shooting video, we ran out of time, got a little tired. And so John is going to be taking over from here forward where he's going to do some more installation of putting together the rest of the stuff, including dropping in the engine and getting it mounted up. Okay, so here we are with the engine in the car. John went through and first by started by installing the slave cylinder into the transmission, then installed the trans onto the engine. They attempted to actually, once bolting the trans to the engine, the engine on the ground having the vehicle lower down onto it. Didn't work exactly the way he, well, we had planned on that, so. This ain't gonna work. It actually went in over the top uh, and dropped the engine in place, bolted it up. Uh, at that point, the wiring harness was run, but a few things had to be removed. Uh, the coolant pipes underneath had to be removed to actually allow us to get the harness installed the rest of the way. And then we just installed our uh, slave cylinder line from the brake boost or from the, from the brake and then bled the slave cylinder, all the air out of the system. Okay, so when you're bleeding your clutch, what you're gonna do is fill your, your brake fluid reservoir with, with brake fluid. You then put your cap on, and then we have our bleeder tool that we're gonna be using. This is a pressure bleeder. You can also have a friend uh, pump it, pump the, the pedal inside, the clutch pedal. It is a little bit more of a pain to do that, so what you're gonna do is hook it up like that, get this thing filled with brakes, pump it up to roughly around 10 PSI, and then we're gonna come down here where we can show you where, how, where you're gonna bleed it at. Okay, so the bleeder block right here is what we're gonna be accessing. You pressurize it, and then what you're gonna do is crack it open when it's pressurized, allow the fluid to come out, and then you are going to close it up. Then you're gonna test your pedal inside, verify if you have a hard pedal or not yet, and then continue to repeat the process until you've gotten all the air out. You will wanna have hook up uh, our clutch bleeder tool, uh, the kit that we have with this actually includes a bleeder bottle, which you would hook on the end here and then allow it to bleed into. You don't really want brake fluid uh, bleeding all over the, all your trans and the floor and all that other stuff. So uh, you will go ahead and just repeat that process, testing the brake, uh, the clutch pedal after every bleed to make sure that you have a good pedal and continue that process until you do. All right, now we're gonna install our shifter bracket here. This is for the cables. And we, if, you're, if you want a little more of a DIY on this, we actually have a, a DIY where we uh, installed bushings uh, to replace these inserts right here on this bracket. And we also installed a, uh, a metal bracket here but we're gonna throw this guy on and then we can install our shift cables. Okay, so we have our end links that we need to throw on now. Now, what you have in these vehicles is these cables that latch on to, to the end links. What you have is these spring-loaded locks which you pull up like this and then you get the shifter in place and you release them. 
Now what you need is inside the vehicle, there's actually supposed to be a locking pin where you pull up the shift boot and drop it in place. Uh, we are going to, we have that locked in place in the car and we're just gonna, going to drop these onto our cables and then we're gonna go ahead and lock these down. So uh, we're gonna do that now. All right, so now that we have that position in place, we had to slide these out and then get the cables into it and then we just lock them in place like so and then like so. Now, what you wanna do in that situation, obviously we had our end link pop off here, we gotta get our, our clip in place and then we're gonna run through the gear just to make sure we have them all. So, we're now installing a dipstick because we're not gonna mention who. Somebody forgot to install it. So, we're now installing it after our engine's in the car and we just had to take this boost pipe off, which We'll get it threaded in. We'll also go install this boost pipe that I also forgot to install before doing the engine into the car. All right, now we got our boost pipe going up and I have to kind of get these brackets around everything, which is why it's probably easier to do this with the engine out of the car. Although it may have created some issues with clearance when you're going in. And then we're gonna go up top and just verify get this on this throttle body all the way. We're gonna get this mounted in place and then get this thing tightened back up. Okay, so now we're gonna tighten our uh, boost pipe here. Or this is to the throttle body. One note I wanted to mention here, if you look, see these yellow wires? Because these yellow wires, I can tell you that this has been repaired. Now, this was uh, an issue that they had around throttle body connectors. The terminals would actually get loose, so there was a repair where you'd update to a different connector and then uh, crimp new ends, new terminal ends onto the wires. And the reason why VW makes all their repair wires yellow is for this exact reason. So I can look at it and immediately know there was wire repair done here. So if we ever have a future issue relating to the throttle body, you can know to look potentially for issues with this repair or uh, in, look in that general vicinity for to verify that there were any issues relating to the repair. All right, now we're gonna do our cam sensor, install that. Uh, just gonna pop this connector on real quick and then get this guy in place. It does have a seal on it, so you will wanna make sure that you can put a little oil on there if you have trouble getting it in and then get this thing bolted up. Okay, so now we're going to put these lines on here. They are color-coded. Uh, if you look at the clips here, you can see this one's green, it goes on the green one. This one is white, goes on the white, and then this one has a metal end on it right here, which is what goes on the back side here. So we're not gonna put the green one on because we have to do that later. And we're just gonna put these other two on so they're done and out of the way for now. All right, now we're gonna throw this cool bottle on. We have our spring clamp pliers and this just slides over this pipe here and it should bottom out at this here and slide this down. Spring clamp pliers are not necessary but you make your life a lot easier because these are tough to deal with without them. And we're gonna leave this to the side for now until we finish up later on. So we're gonna swing this out of the way and we'll wait to bolt that up until we are finished with our last line over here. Now we're gonna throw this oil filter on just so that we're ready for, for a startup later. All right, now we're gonna install our high pressure fuel pump and set it down on top of our hard line here and then sit this in place. And there is some spring tension there so we're going to have to give it a little bit of tension to get that thing threaded. All right, we got that threaded on. I did, I did turn the crank over a little bit just because there's a little bit more tension than I would like on this. And so what you're gonna do is as you tighten these, you wanna walk this thing down evenly. So you snug down the bottom and then the top and then go back and forth as you tighten. Now that's on. We can get this hard line in place, get this guy threaded on. Now grab our 17 and tighten that up. 
Now we can put our hose on and again get our spring clamp pliers. Pop this in place. Okay, now we are gonna swap our plugs. We haven't done it through this process because we were, we wanna make sure that you, before you put new plugs in that you have good ones. So we're gonna swap these out. All right, now we're gonna pop our coils in. And these, if you look here with the, the metal ends, there's a couple different revisions of coils. We do have a DIY on coils, and we also explain a lot more in detail, but there's a bunch of different revisions of ignition coils, so you always wanna make sure you're getting current versions, uh, and just FYI, in case you don't know, aftermarket coils run very poorly in pretty much all VW models, so we do not recommend aftermarket coils, and uh, we have Bosch ones, which, you know, any, any type of uh, non-OEM brand that's high-end will work, but we do not want to mess with things that are super cheap coils. Now we're going to put our ground on, and then we're also going to put our uh, star cable on so we'll put this on and tighten that up and then we will show our battery our starter cable all right now we have this cable this goes directly from the battery positive to here and we pop this in place and that connector does need to be off so that we can get that slid in place then we're going to tighten that nut down all right now we are going to put on our lower boost pipe here and i'm going to actually feed this into the pipe here, mount that in place, and then you're gonna get it clipped into the intercooler. Now this has a clip that just is a quick connector, so you gotta get it in and then clipped in place. You do wanna make sure that once you get this thing snapped in, you give it some tugs to make sure it's in all the way, because if you don't, you'll, once soon as you hit boost for the first time, this thing will blow off like, like that. So once you give it a couple good tugs, you should know for sure that this thing's clipped in real good. Now we're going to throw our downpipe on and the orientation of this angled part of the gasket goes down. Get that onto our studs, which we replaced, and then we can feed our downpipe in place. We're on now, and so we're going to put our nuts on. All right, now we have our downpipe installed. We have our oxygen sensor mounted in place, so it's all plugged up here. And we're gonna put this heat shield in place, which bolts to the back of the head here. Okay, now we're gonna get this line mounted in place. We are gonna route this underneath uh, this hose here and get everything lined up. All right, now we have completed our Coolant bottle in, we just gotta take these two screws in the back here in and then get our filler neck in and we should be pretty much buttoned up on this side of our engine. All right, now that we got our rail on and everything in place, we're gonna put this coolant line, we got our other coolant line to the other side of this rail from the coolant bottle in place. And these are all the return lines that go to that coolant bottle. Now we have our booster pipe here your brake booster. This is what supplies, this vacuum pump right here supplies vacuum to your, for your power brakes. And that's all seated there. And we can mount this wire over here on this 10 millimeter over here. Okay, now we're gonna throw our center section here on with our V-bands and get that mounted in place and we're going to grab our nut for our v-band should be enough to where we can deal with that and then we're going to get our auction sensors plugged up and get the wires routed out of the way now we're going to put our rear muffler up we're going to swing it into our mounts here and pop it into our hangers yeah Now, now we can put this guy in. All right, we're gonna put our mid pipe in here and slide this into our
bracket there, and then we should be able to get this already lined up. Okay, so we now have our exhaust hung. It's all bolted up and in place, and we are done with our exhaust. Everything's mounted up, tightened. You always want to make sure you have the correct orientation, so a lot of times you'll end up tightening and loosening these V-bands a few times to get everything twisted in place, make sure your oxygen sensor's clear, make sure your tips on the back line up, all that stuff. And we're ready to go back up top. Okay, so now we are ready to fill this thing with oil. We got our locking funnel here. We're gonna just get this thing set in place. We're gonna fill this engine with oil. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, since we just finished our engine, we don't have cool in this thing yet, but we wanna get this oil already through the system. So what I'm gonna do is unplug the ignition coils, and then we're gonna crank this thing over by hooking up a jump box to it for now, just so we can get the oil run through the engine. You wanna do that to get oil run through as much as possible before you start this thing up. So we're just gonna crank it right now to get that oil running through the system. Yeah, sounds like it's got compression. All right. Yeah, now the battery's dying. So after we cranked and no start this vehicle, we actually determined that the vehicle had a bad fuel pump in it. Uh, we then swapped out to a new fuel pump and test drove the vehicle. At that point during the test drive, we actually noted a misfire in the engine. Uh, unfortunately, we did not replace the injectors. This is probably one of the very few things. Uh, the injectors and the turbo were probably the only two things on this engine that were not new. Ended up having bad injectors. We were fortunately able to get that covered under warranty extension for this vehicle. So the car went to the local dealer here uh, and then got covered under warranty and is now back. Uh, with the injectors replaced. We do have a few things to address, small little details, uh, one of them being the ABS module, and uh, there is a mass airflow sensor fault that we still need to address. But the major part of this build is done, and we have completed our build on our Mark 6 engine. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.